Okay, in this video, uh, we're going to look at an example that is in my notes for MAE 3323. And this is example 3-4 out of our Shigley textbook. And it's a more circle example. So let's have a look at what it says. It says we have a stress element. Oh, by the way, this is maybe a little bit small to read. But uh, my students do have access to this printed set of notes and can follow it from there if this is too small. So if it's too small, I suggest you pause it and go get a copy of this from the notes. Stress element has sigma x is 80 megapascals, tau x y is 50 megapascals, clockwise, as shown in figure 3-11a, which is right here. We see the 80 and we see the 50. Use more circle to find the principal stresses and directions and show these and stress elements correctly aligned with respect to the x-y coordinates. Draw another stress element uh, to tau 1, tau 2, finding the corresponding normal stresses and label the drawing completely. Then repeat it using only the equations. And in a sense, there's almost no difference between A and B. It's just a matter of whether you draw the circle or not. And so let's look at, uh, get used to this thing. Okay, so we have a sigma x of 50. And we'll be drawing a graph on a tau and a sigma axis and so our sigma x is 80 and it had a tau of 50 clockwise where notice tau's clockwise are positive tau's counterclockwise are negative not sure why that toolbar keeps coming up but I will close it okay I'm not sure what that did to the picture but that's okay um, let's see and so we have this point on our diagram now going back to our stress cube we see that on the Y face, we still have the 50 shear in the opposite direction, but we have no normal stress, or we have zero normal stress. So we go to zero normal stress, and then we go downward to a shear stress of 50. That gives us our point on the other side of the circle. Now we're ready to use the uh, reasoning of the circle to generate the, uh, the equations. And so the center of the circle is going to be halfway between the sigma x uh, and the sigma y which is 0 so half of 80 is 40 that's the center location and then we have a uh, triangle 40 by 50 and when we Pythagorize the 40 and the 50 we get a 64 and if we wish we can take the inverse tangent of the 50 over the 40 that will give us an angle of 51.3 degrees uh, and that angle goes from our original st stress state here to the principal stress state sigma 1 and sigma 2 way over here to go the uh, and that would be a clockwise rotation to get to the principal stresses uh, that 51 minus 9, 90 minus the 51 would give us a 38.7 angle from our starting stress situation to the maximum shear stress situation which occurs here and that would be uh, tau 1 would be the radius of the circle and it, it occurs at uh, a normal stress of 40 which is the center of the circle so this is a uh, sigma of 40 and a tau of 64 to draw these on uh, stress elements we'll rotate clockwise uh, 51.3 degrees divided by 2 to get to the principal stress face and we'll rotate counterclockwise 38.7 divided by 2 to get to the maximum shear stress face and our principal stress was the center 40 plus the 64 so that would be what 104 I guess and the other principal stress would be the uh, 40 minus 64 which would be a minus 24. Let's go look at what got drawn. Okay, the principal stresses we rotated from here to here and got principal stresses of 104 and minus 24 and this angle 25.7 is one half of the 51.3 degrees. And then this one would be rotated through an angle 19.3 half of the 38.7 and it would have a normal stress of 40, normal stress of 40, and a shear stress clockwise of 64. 
and then we would have the same shear stress 64 on this other side uh, sorry down on the bottom but it also has a normal stress of 40 normal stress of 40 here normal stress of 40 here on the uh, other face 90 degrees apart and of course equal and opposite here and here and that is everything now if we were going to do the same thing with the equations looking what we would say uh, let's see it says it's the analytical scheme and so the first thing we would do is calculate the angle which was one half of we've already applied the one half the inverse tangent of 2 tau xy over sigma x minus sigma y. Let's take a look at why that formula makes sense. 2 tau xy over the difference between those two. What we want to do is the inverse tangent of the tau divided by sigma x minus sigma y over 2. So we have the tau over the sigma x over sigma y. The over 2 means we brought the 2 into the numerator. And we have already in this formula said we would divide by 2. And so that inverse tangent would give us either a negative value or a positive value. There's an ambiguity in there. And uh, we're going to take that first angle of 25.7. Then we said the uh, center of the circle was the average of the normals, 80 plus 0 over 2. Oh, using cosines and sines. You know what? This is just nonsense using the cosines and sines. Okay, by the formula method, here's what I presume they meant. And here's what you ought to do. First of all, our sigma 1 and sigma 2 are going to be sigma x plus sigma y over 2. That's the center of the circle plus the radius of the circle. And the radius of, of the circle comes from the difference between sigma x and sigma y, that quantity over 2, plus the tau uh, squared, uh, pythagorizing those two numbers to get this. So this is the radius of the circle. This is the center of, of the circle. And of course, the tau values is just plus or minus the radius of the circle. And the angle would be the inverse tangent of the tau quantity divided by the sigma x minus sigma y over 2 which would be our distance here sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 distance from center to the sigma x term that's what I thought they would have meant by the uh, equation method and that's what I recommend for the equation method I don't think you want to get into any sines and cosines uh, and so we're, it does lead to the same results, but we're going to ignore the rest of that.